First off, it's okay if your photos suck. Everyone's photos suck at some point. Or maybe they don't suck, but you're just having a hard time standing apart from the crowd. Either way, this video is for you. Once you get comfortable with photography, it can be hard to break through to the next level. So in this video, we're gonna cover eight things that may be holding back your photography. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All of our favorite shoots we've done have involved some level of thoughtful planning leading up to the actual shoot. That's something we always try to put emphasis on in our videos. Establishing the mood and look you're going for and how you're gonna achieve both those things is super important to pulling off a successful shoot. It doesn't matter what type of photography you shoot either. If you shoot landscapes, you know you have to be in the right place at the right time during the right time of year to even get the shots that you want. And with our editorial type photography, we want the model, outfit, location, lighting, all to work together to reinforce the mood and theme of the shoot. Okay, this is something we've mentioned a few times in the past. It's completely normal when you're starting out to see a photo that you like from another photographer and then try to do something similar. And that's totally fine. That's all part of the learning process. What we always recommend is drawing inspiration from all sorts of media, not just photography. So in our self-portrait challenge, we combined influences from the movie Garden State and the film director Wes Anderson to create our own unique photo. The key thing is to remember to add your own unique spin to whatever you do. Think about what inspires you or what unique perspective you have that you can integrate into your photography. If you shoot JPEG, you should take the time when shooting to make sure your white balance is correct. If you shoot raw, it's an easy fix to do in post-production. When shooting people, we always try to prioritize making the skin tone look as natural as possible. A lot of times when people send us photos they have trouble editing, white balance is one of the first things we look to fix. Without lighting, photography doesn't exist. It's hands down the most important element, more than your lens or your camera body, more than what presets you use, lighting. So a few things to keep in mind, try not to mix color temperatures unless that's your goal. So for instance, if you have beautiful daylight pouring through your windows and you have tungsten lights on inside your house, you are now mixing two completely different lighting temperatures, which generally leads to pretty undesirable results. Second, simply wait for the best light. This goes hand in hand with planning your shoot from reason number one, but even still, sometimes things don't go according to plan and maybe the weather doesn't cooperate. If you're relying on the sun for portraits and it's too harsh, consider bringing a reflector with you that you can use to bounce and fill light or use as diffusion to minimize the harsh sun. Also, if you can just wait for the sun to get lower in the sky, you may have more success. Like this shoot we did on the beach in Montauk. We were expecting gray, cloudy skies, but we got harsh sun. We got some photos for safety, but came back a little later once the sun was lower and reshot the photos in better light. This is one of the biggest aspects that separates great photographers from good photographers. Great photographers generally have something to say with their work and it really comes through in the final image. They have a unique perspective, they can capture raw emotion, or just tell a story in a way that others can't. It can be hard to find your voice and develop your style, but one of the best ways to do this is to shoot as many different genres of photography as possible and then really focus on the one you're most passionate about. Another thing we notice when people send us photos to critique is lackluster composition. Some boring photos don't have much of a focal point, causing the eye to wander around looking for some sort of visual interest. There are so many things that can help you create strong compositions like streams of light, textures, the angle at which you're shooting, and other elements in your frame that can help guide the viewer's eyes straight to your subject. We've made a couple of videos about different composition techniques if you want to learn more. This is similar to the last reason because strong composition by its nature should help your subject stand out and tell the viewer where to look. Think about how your angle and even focal length will affect your subject. So if you have telephone poles and branches right behind your subject's head, it can not only keep your subject from standing out, but it's also just distracting. In some cases, you may have to resort to Photoshop, take the shot of our astronaut friend Will here. The location is great, but there's just way too many poles and wires around. Ideally, you won't have to get this crazy with Photoshop, but here it helps strengthen the photo a lot. Another thing that can help is shooting with a more shallow depth of field and having separation between your subject and the background. This will naturally provide separation and create a stronger image in a lot of cases. In case you haven't heard, Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people with thousands of classes covering photography, video, freelancing, design, and a bunch of other cool stuff. And we are super excited to announce we created an exclusive Skillshare original class that is launching on October 20th. So now is the perfect time to get signed up 
so you can watch it when it goes live. There are so many cool classes on Skillshare, like this one by Niles and Caleb from Moments, where they teach iPhone filmmaking. Or maybe you want to learn how to shoot an urban lookbook. You can learn that from photographer Trash Hand, who I've been following on Instagram for years. The bottom line is there are all kinds of photography and filmmaking classes on Skillshare from people you know and love. And, and, uh, and us. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons that can fit into any schedule. And a premium membership is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And right now, the first 1,000 people to use our link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. This is super common with beginner photographers as they experiment with photo editing and try to establish their style. This is also something that comes down to personal taste, so we like to give our photos a more timeless edit. If we look back on our early photos when we were just starting out, we see those lifted blacks, which were really popular back then, and now it's pretty obvious when those photos were shot, and that's something we want to avoid. It was a trend, and now it's out of style. That's one of the reasons why we're drawn to film photography, because film stocks have stayed pretty consistent over the years, so it helps keep your photos from being timestamped to a certain Photoshop era. On the flip side of that, raw digital photos do need to be processed in some way. Leaving them straight out of camera looks like you only did half the job. We've got so many videos on how to edit in Lightroom and create your own presets, so get comfortable with the software, and then you can edit your photos however suits your style. But leaving them unedited, at least to us, in this day and age, looks unprofessional. Well, we hope these eight reasons help you to improve your work and take it to the next level. Do us a favor and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next video. Turn on the notification bell, say something nice in the comments, Watch both of our other channels. Sure. Sign up for a Skillshare class. Oh yeah. Um, anything else we should do? Oh, and then put our put our videos whenever you leave your house or go to bed. Put our videos on, um, like a, a looping playlist. Hello? Can you loop your playlist? I don't know. Oh, oh, there's a spider on me.